The best stress relief, sleep. The best immune booster, sleep. The best nootropic, sleep. Dr. Andrew Huberman has been sharing numerous protocols to live your healthiest life. This week, I'm gonna put his toolkit for sleep to the test. I will share my data and personal experience to see if these science-based tools actually work. But first, who is Andrew Huberman? I'm Andrew Huberman. He's the host of the Huberman Lab podcast. And I'm a professor of neurobiology and ophthalmology at Stanford School of Medicine. And he shares endless protocols on science-based tools to live a healthier life. Now, what's the purpose of this seven-day sleep challenge? Will it actually change my life? Will I feel better? Will I feel more focused throughout the day? And will I be a better partner? What are the rules for this challenge? One, wake up at the same time every day. Bedtime, not as important. Two, view sunlight within 30 minutes of waking up. Three, no phone or caffeine within 90 minutes of waking. Wait, do I actually have to do that? Four, no caffeine eight to 10 hours before bed. Five, yoga nidra or NSDR. Six, avoid bright light at night. Seven, limit daytime naps. Eight, view the sunset. Nine, take pills, lots of pills. Supplements, supplements. And also the list is pretty long, so it's a lot of effort. And I wanna test while I actually consistently do it every single day. So I take my glasses off, I'm gonna dual benefit this, get sun exposure for 40 minutes. And then, I don't know, I might try to do like phone calls or something during this time. This is the first night of sleeping like daddy, I'm Dr. Huberman. And I already had tried to do this challenge once, but then I caught the illness, so we're gonna start all over again. He recommends 145 milligrams of magnesium 3 and 8 or 200 milligrams of ma magnesium biglycinate. This is the one I decided to get, the Thorn one. Thorn, please sponsor me. Tastes kind of sweet, which is interesting. Blender. And I'm gonna mix that first so we can use this water to drink everything else. So he does recommend Thorn or Momentus. He keeps switching between the two. I think depending on whoever pays him more, those are the two brands that he recommends. He used to recommend this app, Reveri, for sleep hypnosis. So if you wake up in the night or you have trouble falling asleep, three times per week, any time of day, 10 to 15 minutes long. It helps rewire your nervous system to help fall asleep faster. So doing NSDR, Yoga Nidra, the same thing. But recently, he started to get featured on Virtuswan. Virtuswan, I don't know how to say it. It is a very weird looking app. I don't know if I like this creepy little dude here but they do have NSDR. Now what is NSDR or Yoga Nidra? Same thing, just different names. Protocol where you lay essentially, lie down, you close your eyes and you listen to this audio track, which tells you to bring attention to different parts of your body. And that's pretty much it. It's kind of like pseudo sleep is what they're calling it. And there's really cool free tracks. So I found one where- it's 10 minute non-sleep deep rest protocol. You can actually get Andrew Huberman's voice on there, so this is kind of cool. Another one that I really like, that's just Yoga Nidra Guided Meditation. It's 10 minutes long, and I download these for offline use, and I listen to them whenever I'm tired. I'm gonna finish my magnesium right here, and then we're gonna go to bed. And I think he does this about an hour or more before he falls asleep. I'm ready to fall asleep right now, to be honest. I'm so tired. Day one, Whoop 98, Aura 91. Another thing Huberman says, no caffeine within 90 minutes of waking up, so. I'm having my 200 milligrams of Celsius right now. I'm gonna go work out, get my run in, but no caffeine this morning. It's about 11.27, so that's good news. All right, it's 45 minutes until sunset. Here's Jacob, he just took my yoga class and we're back on the pool deck here watching the sunset. Dr. Huberman, uh, circadian rhythm setting right now, so this is absolutely insane. So I'm using this app here called High Coffee to track my milligram intake of caffeine. And I did have a cold brew and we're just below that sleep line right there, so that's good. Night two of taking Dr. Huberman pills. I've got a whole encasing here. Now I just carry all the pills in here. At this point, I've memorized how many pills of each I need to take. I probably need like a pill box. I think I took everything. Now these are all the supplements that he recommends taking on his toolkit for sleep. 145 milligrams of magnesium 3 and 8 or 200 milligrams of magnesium biglycinate, 50 milligrams of apigenin, 100 to 400 milligrams of L-theanine, and then three to four nights per week, take two grams of glycine and 100 milligrams of GABA. It states to take these 30 to 60 minutes before bed. The biggest ones that I've noticed is glycine will make me tired before I go to bed. Magnesium, I just get better recovery scores on my trackers. And then the rest, I don't really notice much of a difference, but maybe it's doing something. You know, the weird part is I don't even know what Apigenin does and I take it. Maybe I should do my research more. Day two, 80% and 88. Day three of Huberman, gotta get my morning sunlight. These are transition glasses, so I can't wear them. I need to get non-transition prescription glasses. It is shady, so I don't know how valuable this is. He says you need to be directly in the sun, but I'm gonna try to run right by the water here, and hopefully we can get some sunlight here. It's New York, there's buildings, so I don't know what else to do. Now, why the sunset? What I've read, and don't count me on it, I'm a YouTuber, not an actual scientist, but it's the shift in the light in the sky going from the bright white to the red shift, and it tells your brain 
hey, it's time to go to bed. And watching the sunset is a great way to trigger your circadian rhythm to be like, hey, we need to start producing melatonin so we can prepare to go to bed. And that's kind of why he says to watch the sunset. It's the shift of light from one color to another. And because our eyes are technically part of our brain that just kind of popped out, it's the only direct access way to get information from the outside world into our brain. I don't know what I'm saying. Don't trust me. It is sunset time. My timer just went off. I'm here with Tejas and we are watching the sun. Hey, I'm trying to vlog. And according to Dr. Huberman, we're supposed to watch the sunset to set a circadian rhythm. I'm gonna take my glasses off so I can really get my red light into my retinas, whatever that means. And hopefully this is gonna help me sleep better tonight. Oh, no, it doesn't make you fall asleep that fast. <laughs> How do we know this Dr. Huberman guy is like legit? That's a great question. I'm not a doctor and that's why we're trying this out to see for ourselves. Pop pills, animals, pill popping animals. Cheers. Day three, 66 and 67, there was a little social conflict that kind of lowered my scores. I went to dinner with friends, okay? Huberman day four, it is like mid afternoon, a little bit of a crash. I don't know if it's because I had too much coffee, but I waited 90 minutes and we're just filming all day. I'm here with Cole, we're gonna go do some stuff. No caffeine, no phone, 90 minutes after waking. The biggest argument that I've read about it was that no phone, like your brain is processing everything from the night before. REM, which is typically on the second half night of your sleep is where most of your brain is processing things. And as soon as you wake up, it's still kind of figuring out and processing everything. So if you take and open your phone and start to scroll through Instagram or something, it's gonna kind of short circuit that processing of information. So thus, he says not to use your phone to maximize your sleep in the morning. And the no caffeine within 90 minutes is something I've been testing more of. I do sometimes get that afternoon crash and I've been experimenting. I've noticed that when I don't drink caffeine within 90 minutes, I don't get that afternoon crash as much. So I've been trying to tell myself in my head, hey, if you drink caffeine now, you're gonna crash later. And me having that negative visualization has kind of trained myself not to drink caffeine. So Day early. four of Huberman's sleep, putting in a heaping scoop of magnesium today because I am sore and hopefully this will help maximize blood flow. Now, let's turn into a pill popping animal. Swallowing complete. Day four, 55% on the whoop, 65 on the aura. Maybe if I sort out the pills beforehand, it would be a little bit easier. Limit daytime naps. He says, try to avoid any daytime naps over 90 minutes during the day. So I don't take any naps, but if you do, just minimize those. And no caffeine eight to 10 hours before bed. I cut off at 2 p.m. and it's been a strict rule that I've had and 95% of the time I follow this rule. I have noticed that when I drink caffeine after that time, my heart rate is a little bit elevated on all of my sleep trackers. So that's kind of a reminder to kind of tone down my caffeine usage. And I do sleep, but sometimes my sleep isn't just as good. See you tomorrow. Day five, 92% on whoop, 71 on aura. Day six of Huberman challenge, take off glasses, view sunlight. Buildings are blocking it again, but hopefully as I walk around the city, I'll get some sun exposure. And if you didn't know on this channel, now I have a new goal of trying to run a sub five minute mile. So I'm getting my sun exposure on my way to this metabolic health test. So if you want to see that video, make sure to turn on your post notifications. It's midday, this is this day six of Huberman challenge. I'm here with Zach, we just shot some videos and I feel good, I feel energized, I feel pumped. Yeah, I feel really good. Let's see how the evening goes. Avoid bright lights. I know a lot of people say blue light blockers, no blue light at night. Huberman, night six. But I think the common thing that's happening now is no bright lights, it doesn't matter what color it is. So what I've been trying to do is turn on the lights at night. Yeah, I do turn it red because the red is just more dim and it looks cooler and it's kind of like a red light district. These are all the pills I have to take. Swallowed. But just minimizing bright light exposure at night. I've, I've been putting night lights all over the house that are motion sensor based and smart lights that automatically dim in the evening. So it just makes the process easier where I don't have to worry about having bright lights and it's kind of like hands off approach. It just automatically happens. Day six, 50 on whoop, 73 on aura. I worked out a ton this day. Morning sunlight and run. Let's go. All right, Huberman day seven. This is the final day. Uh, waking up, you gotta go outside, get your sun. So that's what we're doing. Sun's not extremely bright, so that just means I gotta spend more time outside. My sleep scores have been pretty subpar, and that's because of lifestyle factors, not because of Huberman. I would say the biggest thing I learned was that lifestyle and behavior factors matter much more than taking a whole bunch of supplements. They're not gonna kind of fix the solution around your sleep. Secondly, having a consistent sleep schedule is a lot harder than it sounds. There's so many different things that happen in life that you just wanna like change your sleep schedule here and there. Third, being a normal human involves socializing and having friends. And I think that's very healthy and important, but that can have a negative impact on your sleep, especially if you're staying out later, you're going to dinner, you're eating later, or even if you're having one to two alcoholic drinks before bed. We are watching the sunset. Look at this absolutely gorgeous sunset here. 
And yeah, I don't really know if this watching the sunset thing makes me feel better. Sleep makes me fall asleep faster, but it does make me feel better because this is just absolutely gorgeous. So, you can't hate on these views, I'll tell you that much. I don't know which views we're talking about. Now, one thing I do love about Huberman is he has a four-step process for life-changing results. And he says, do these in order because they're of hierarchy and importance. One is behavior, so lifestyle behaviors, what you do during the day. Two is nutrition, what are you eating? Are you eating whole foods or processed McDonald's? Three is supplements, taking any extra supplements if you're unable to get that from your diet. And then lastly, prescription medication. So if you do need prescription, that's kind of your last resort. Make sure you get your behaviors, nutrition, supplements, then prescription medication. To be honest with you, I'm kind of exhausted of taking all these supplements. Like. It's a lot of effort, it's a lot of process, and I'm lazy. So, we tried the experiment. I don't know if the supplements do much. There's a lot of other lifestyle factors that have impacted my life in a way where they ruin my sleep more. So, the supplements aren't gonna fix lifestyle factors, but they can help optimize my life if I had a more consistent routine with my sleep, which I don't, so I need to focus on that first. I'm just gonna max out the Huberman dosage today because today's the last day. Pills? And day seven, 84% on Whoop, 69 on Aura. Overall, the Aura said that I was trending with a 70, 85 sleep score, so nothing extraordinarily amazing. And the first day that I stopped doing the Huberman protocol, 92% on Whoop, 73 on Aura. So can we conclude much from this? I don't know which one I trust at this point. Now I found the easiest device out of all these to track the impact of this experiment was my Whoop strap. And they don't let you do custom things, so I used caregiving as my experiment. And over here it shows I did it for seven days, 11 days I didn't, and it had a positive impact. How much, you may ask? It had a wonderful 5% improvement doing the Huberman sleep protocol. Now is that a lot or a little? So if we go down here, uh, my 8 sleep, which is CPAP machine, gives me a 3% improvement in my sleep. So it's better to do the Huberman sleep protocols than it is to buy an 8 sleep in this sense. But if you look at alcohol, I get a minus 17%. So if you do the Huberman sleep protocols and you drink alcohol, the benefits are going to get wiped away by alcohol. Now do I feel different? The biggest thing is that it takes a lot of effort to get all these check boxes done throughout the day. And I was like, this feels like a full time job. You gotta do this and that and this and that and then drink all this water and pills. Supplements. It's not actually realistic to follow this protocol every single day. There are a few that I really love and I'm gonna continue after this experiment. One, magnesium. I'm gonna keep taking magnesium. I've noticed my WHOOP scores are naturally higher when I do take magnesium. So I'm gonna keep that routine. Two, NSDR. I was never really interested in NSDR, but once I started doing it, I noticed how good I feel afterward. Just like 10 minutes, I find a little one on YouTube. It's free, I just press play. And if I'm sleep deprived, like it just helps like a little bit and that feeling of just feeling rested a little bit better, I like it, I do like it, and I'll keep doing it. No caffeine or phone within 90 minutes. That one is extremely hard. I'm trying to do less and less of that. Uh, the no caffeine one's a little bit easier, but I'm allowing myself to break the rule, but I'm trying to be mindful. I want 70% of my week to be no, no caffeine within 90 minutes of waking up. And the two that have been really instrumental is no bright lights at night, so I'm using the Philips Hue to turn my bedroom really dark and red. And then second is no caffeine eight to 10 hours before bed. So I try to cut my caffeine off around 2 p.m. typically every single day. Sometimes I break the rules, but that's like once in a blue moon. But overall, I have a very strict 2 p.m. cutoff. I know Huberman has mentioned that he avoids missing his routine two days in a row. So just trying to get sunlight in the morning every single day, and then if I'm miss a day, that's okay, just don't miss two days in a row. I think doing this experiment was very interesting and kind of seeing the data on my trackers, you know, they're not perfectly accurate, so I have to take all this information with a grain of salt. And subjectively, I did feel better. There are things that I really did enjoy and maybe they didn't impact my life that much, like viewing the sunlight in the morning, viewing the sunset, like those things that I appreciate and I want to do more of, but did it really have a big impact on my sleep? I didn't notice a huge difference. I'm gonna try to do it as often as I can, but it's not gonna be a critical part of my day. Now Huberman has a whole bunch of other protocols around focus, productivity, diet, working out. Do you want to see me test those? Let me know in the comments below. Turn on your notifications so that way my parents can finally be proud of me. We'll see you in the next one. Put a ring on it, they said. I put three.